is well, welcome back. Well, 17 House Democrats were arrested yesterday outside of the Supreme Court during a pro-abortion protest. Protesting in front of the highest court is not illegal, but blocking the street between... This is Fox Business. I wonder what is the business aspect of AOC supposedly getting arrested and then pretending to be handcuffed. A major right-wing talking point right now and we have folks on the left that are on different sides of this yet again we have the right-wing media operating as a monolith right very very closely in sync with the establishment republican politicians and then we have the left all over the place right some are saying this some are saying something else they're beefing with each other but there will be no beefs between Tim Pool and uh, Stephen Crowder or Ben Shapiro or just about any other right-wing channel, except for, of course, Ricky Manor. Let's continue. In the Supreme Court in the Capitol is illegal. Members of the squad turning the protest into a spectacle yesterday with Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez pretending that she was handcuffed. Uh, all for show, uh, before uh, pumping her fist to a crowd of cheering supporters. She's putting her hands behind her back as if she's handcuffed. There were no handcuffs to be seen. And then she does a Josh Howley. Uh, I always feel weird like I'm saying his name wrong. Whatever. Josh Howley. That's what I'm going to call him. Uh, the Josh Howley fist pump. Is there also a video of her running? Well, of course there is. Joining me right now is former Georgia Congressman and former Judiciary Committee ranking member Doug Collins. Doug, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning, Maria. It's good to be with you as well. So I guess putting your hands behind your back as if you have handcuffs <laughs> makes it look better. <laughs> it's more dramatic. Well, I thought the whole thing was set up. I think the whole thing was set up very well, Maria. We had the we had the nice scarf, makeup, and hair did well. We uh, we broke rank only once. So. He is starting off making a point that AOC, attention-starved Twitter influencer, AOC made sure she looks good before she went out in public where she might want to take pictures for her influencer business, where others, including the media, might want to take pictures of her. Is AOC ever been known to leave the house looking like Bannon? I don't think so. I think she's always been known to dress like a diva. So how is this a point? How is AOC appearing the way she always does a point showing that this is somehow staged and, oh, look at how this thing is set up? And the thing about it is an overwhelming majority of the audience watching Fox Business won't even pick up on how illogical that comment is about how she looks. Okay. Sometime I thought she probably could have got the Best Actress Award if she hadn't have just <clears throat> broke that, that moment when she had to put the fist up and then put it real quickly back. But other than that, you know, it was a made-for-TV moment for, uh, for you know, just no purpose at all. Well, it's really what, sad. What is uh, the My point? former colleague, John. That, that, even the way that she throws her hair back and forth, I whip my hair back and forth, I whip my hair back and forth. It just looks so like, slow-mo, let's do slow-mo. Hell no, we won't go. Right. Um. So there's some folks on the left that are talking about the reason why she did it is because this is their theory because she was told to put her hands behind her back i have a problem with that theory because of the reason that police officers tell you to put your hands behind your back i think many people listening right now already know where this is going right when a cop tells you to put your hands behind your back it's usually for a specific reason, right? You know what that reason is. I want you to hear something. Stay with me. 
behind her like she's been handcuffed, but her ha her hands are free. They're not restrained. The cop might have just asked her to do that. I think they asked you to put your hands behind your back. I don't know if it's necessarily like crossing them like that. I don't know. That's what they tell you to do. Yeah, I've seen it at protests. It just, I don't know. It seems like she's doing it to like physically emulate. It's like, how else do you do it? I mean, you don't you don't cross them, I guess. What if her hands are wired? Her hands, her hands aren't wired. I think, um, I, I think... So here we see Newsweek is, I guess, playing a little defense for, oh, look at the cute dog. I guess not really a cute dog, but anyway. Uh, playing a little bit of defense for AOC, saying AOC denies faking being handcuffed, calls it best practice when being detained. So her saying it's best practice suggests that she was not in fact told to put her hands behind her back and that was her decision. And she's now justifying her decision by saying it's best practice. Which sort of goes in along with my assessment, what I started to say earlier, which is why do police officers tell you to put your hands behind your back? And it's funny, you know, Vosh was talking about it. I think some of the guys on Vanguard were talking about it, trying to justify this line of reasoning that um, the cops tell you to put your hands behind your back. Okay. The reason that cops generally tell you to put your hands behind your back, I know a lot of you guys know this already, but is to handcuff you. It is generally safer to handcuff somebody behind them instead of in front of them. That's a decision a police officer makes. They can, in fact handcuff you in the front if they so choose so typically they're going to be handcuffing you behind you and it's physically impossible to do that unless your hands are behind your back it's real pain in the butt and would be confrontational for the officer to pull your hands to the back unexpectedly so that's why they typically will say put your hands behind your back so, I mean, they won't say this part, but it's implied, so they can handcuff you. So if you see an officer escorting someone who's not handcuffed, I think it's safe to assume the officer wouldn't have told that person to put their hands behind their back unless they did that because they were going to handcuff them and change their mind. But generally speaking, we wouldn't expect that they were told to do that, right? Because the only reason they would have been told that is to handcuff them. If they're not handcuffed, then they wouldn't have probably been told to put their hands behind their back, which means most likely they decided to do it on their own, which AOC is confirming by saying that she believes it's best practice. If she was told to, she would say, I was doing that because that's what the officer said. The fact that she's saying it's best practice, so says Newsweek, means that she made that decision. So, AOC, an influencer politician, Known for her theatrics, one of which I would not regard is her saying she could have died at an event where people died, but let right-wing media tell it, <clears throat> they would say that is the case. Um, notice I have not much respect for AOC. I think of her as an influencer, as just theatrical, uh, doing her fake votes and fake stuff on Twitter, not really tagging people. Um, but I don't jump on a bandwagon with bullshit right-wing media and calling her out for saying she could have died in an event where people died anyway um i look at this as again she has a track record for theatrics so i'm leaning towards theatrics again this is good for her reels in the future her little promotional videos um you know vote for me to fight for the people right it's more about how things look versus what's actually been done like what is aoc actually doing with her power to fight for women's rights right now now maybe she is doing stuff and i'm not aware of it but this is an open channel i allow people to call me out every day and call me names and tell me i'm this and that um, i don't block anyone i let the comments um ride so if you're an aoc fan and you can tell me what is she actually doing? And and please show yourself to be smarter than to point out that, oh, she's not a senator or, oh, what do you expect her to do? You know, they don't have enough progressives or yet spare, spare me, spare me, spare me the excuses. There's a lot that she can do. 
There's a lot that private citizens can do. Private citizens that don't have any power. They're not in the house. So at a minimum, she can do what they can do, plus more. Right? So the idea that she is less able to do stuff than a private citizen is with, what is it, 12 million followers, a member of the house, uh, no. She chooses not to do more. Um, I would really like liberals and people who align with, you know, folks like the, what I call the fraud squad, um, a term used by other frauds to refer to her. Um, but unlike those frauds, I'm not sitting here every day talking about one part of the duopoly as if I don't know duo means two. So if you're complaining about the duopoly, you should be complaining about the two, not the one, right? That's fraudulent to talk about duopoly and only talk about the Democrats or only talk about the Republicans, right? But regardless of how, about, how fraudulent the people who call them the fraud squad are, they are the fraud squad in my view. And here's what I would like people that like them and liberals to understand. Politicians in this country, the way we're set up right now, cannot and will not be anytime soon our allies. At best, they are tools to be utilized for what you based on your ideology, would regard as progress. Whether that's reverting back to our traditional values, which we all know what American tradition looks like if we go back 50 years, 100 years, right? Um, but those people who want to go back to traditional values, of course, would suggest that they only want to go back to the good parts of the tradition. I would say... If you only want to go back to the good parts of the tradition, then do you really want to go back to the tradition? Sounds more like you are thinking progressively, right? You want to progress. You don't want to go back to traditions. You want to establish new traditions, which exclude some of the dark sides of our past. At least in theory, that's what you would be talking about. Um, politicians are not our allies. AOC is not an ally. Bernie Sanders is not an ally. Matt Gates is not an ally. Green's not an ally. Trump is not an ally. These guys are tools. I don't mean that pejoratively. They're tools that are funded by us, elected by us, enabled to do all the things that they do, good and bad, by us, right? So, stop thinking of these people as allies. Because when the cameras turn off, when they log out of Twitter, they're not face to face with us. They're face to face with the machine, the Pelosi's, the Trump's, the McCarthy's, the Greens, all the people in the duopoly, the Democrats and the Republican Party. They live in that bubble. They're in that building with those people. The establishment has powerful people in both parties that have a lot of sway and a lot of power that can affect the lives and careers of anyone in the government, right? Whether it's in the House, the Senate, whatever it is, right? Talking Congress, obviously. Um, so they can say all they want to say on Twitter and on a five-minute TV interview, but when the cameras go off, when Twitter gets logged out, they got to go face-to-face -face with people like Pelosi that is a donation powerhouse and has been in the Washington swamp for so long, right? Their ability to eat and pay their bills is subject to this whole dynamic. So what that means is, if you really want change, you need to go to war. And I would say especially with the people that you would want to call your allies. I know that sounds sort of counterintuitive, but I really think that you should consider what I'm, what I'm trying to say. It's just like how they said, we're going to elect, we're going to hold our nose and elect Joe Biden, and then we're going to push him left. So they were actually agreeing with what I'm suggesting now. The only way to push Biden left would be to fight Biden, to treat him not as an ally, but as a tool. We're going to put you in power, and then you're going to do what we want you to do. We, the people who elected you, that's the way 
this country was founded. That's the way our government is supposed to work, right? Problem is, they didn't actually do that. They said they were going to push him left. Then he gets elected, and the biggest movement I saw was uh, the force, the vote. Then after that, they all went to sleep, put in a coma, right? Get the online left with the little beefs back and forth, who's the real left and who's not the real left. One guy turns his entire channel into a uh, Russian propaganda channel, right? All he wants to talk about is the damn Ukraine war. Then we got the the Jimmy Dore wing and all the other independent left-wing channels that are doing exactly what corporate media does, right? Their views are how they pay their bills. Jimmy Dore has a large following. It would be bad for business to be against Jimmy Dore, right? Unless, of course, you're targeting a different market, like the fake progressive market, the MSNBC types. Right, but if you're going to be on the contrary side, I don't want to say contrary, um, then you're going to find yourself allying with scumbags like Jimmy Dore and Jackson Hinkle and all these other clowns that we have in the so-called left. Right. Um, the way that you can get the most results is by going to war with those who most closely align with you. I don't know why there's this idea of you got to be nice and friendly with these politicians. They're not our friends. Stop and think for a moment. What do you think AOC is going to do if her own followers start going after her, demanding that she takes more action and does more? Is the idea that she's just going to cry and go home and she's going to quit? Is that what you guys think? She's got it made. 12 million followers. She's making $180,000 a year. She can go the path of Pelosi, and that means decades and decades of just prosperity. Right? You think she's going to throw that all away just because her followers demand more from her? Or do you think she's going to perhaps decide, hey, my theatrics is not cutting it. My followers demand more. So I guess I need to do more and then do more. What do you think is more, more a rational assessment of what AOC would do if her followers went to war with her, demanding more from her? That she would quit and run away and you'd lose the one ally you have? Or would you force her to do more? And then by doing so, force other so-called progressives to do more. They would see how AOC's fans turned on her because she wasn't delivering. And they wouldn't want their fans to turn on them. Notice I said fans, right? Because that's the influencer politics we have now. They don't want the same thing to happen to them. So they would be like, all right, you know, we got to start doing some more stuff. Future progressives that want to get elected would also observe things have changed. Simply putting stuff up on Twitter and doing a fake handcuff stunt or a fake uh, I'm asleep on the steps stunt, which apologists would say was not fake. They actually did sleep on the steps, but I think you're missing the big picture. But anyway, they would see that this is a new generation. You've got to actually deliver. So they would come into Congress expecting that if they don't deliver, they're going to be in trouble. Also, there's a domino effect. Other people who have maybe given up on the Democrats, given up on politics, would see how AOC was pushed to doing more things and deliver more results because people united and pushed back against her rather than just focusing on the other. And they would say, they would look at this and be inspired that there is a path that, that you can actually, like our government can function in terms of our democracy. Not direct democracy. Um, and they'd be inspired to get involved, get engaged. They would realize the message that I've been saying for so long. If all you do is vote, you're wasting your time. If all you do is vote, you're wasting your time. Voting is only the beginning. Only voting is what you do if you just want to go through the motions and you don't really care about any results. You just want to be able to say, I voted, and have your little I voted sticker or whatever, and that's it. If you really care about change, then voting is the bare minimum.
it's sort of like you're some kind of musical performer and you simply go to an event where there's going to be a lot of opportunity. Big producers are going to be there looking for talent, right? And you go there, right? That's the thing to do. You need to go to this event. And you did it. You went there. But that's all you did. You didn't get on the stage. You didn't go and mingle and try to meet people. All you did was go to the event. All you did is vote. You might as well not have gone to the event, right? If you're not going to try to get on stage and perform, if you're not going to try to shake hands and, and meet people and, and get business cards or whatever, um, then why go? If you're just going to vote every four years and then go home and stay on Facebook, you're not going to boycott, you're not going to protest, you're not going to demand more from our politicians, then why bother voting? And then you have people that don't realize or recognize this dynamic or they don't want to be honest about it and they'll say that voting doesn't work. The whole point of why voting works is because politicians need the votes to stay in power. But if all you're doing is voting, then you're basically giving them a blank check. There needs to be a threat that you walk away and take your vote with you. I'm voting for you to do X, Y, and Z. If you don't deliver, I'm voting you out. But if you're just simply voting, that's a blank check, right? If there's no threat, if there's no engagement post-vote, you're wasting your time. The folks who tell you electoral politics is useless, they won't tell you that. They won't tell you that the reason why your votes don't seem to matter is because you don't follow up the votes with anything. You don't vote with demands and you don't have consequences. Why on earth would politicians listen to you if they can get your votes for free and if once they get in power, you leave them be? Right. This is the Debate Channel. Debate in the comment section below. Click on the like button, subscribe, smash that bell. Be well.